Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the Guitar Bucket List. I'm Jim Fusco and here is the newest addition to my collection. That would be the Gibson Double Diamond ES-335. This is a unique guitar for a few different reasons, um, but first it's uh, really about what guitar it is. And this one here was a limited run. Um, I believe they made less than a couple hundred of each color. It came in black pearl or this one, which is the white pearl version. And, um, you know, the color is really nice in person. It does have a little bit of that pearl essence to it. Um, and this guitar is from 2006, so it has yellow. The lacquer has yellowed over time but it's yellowed very evenly. Uh, there's no stand rash, there's no marks or anything on it. It really is in fantastic condition, especially after I cleaned up uh, some of the uh, kind of like buckle scratches and scuffs that were on the back that really just buffed right out. Um, interestingly enough, it the inside of these diamond holes here does not have the lacquer on it. Um, so you can see the original white color so that's not, you know, yellowed by uh, the clear coat over the top. So you can see what the original color was um, at, that's compared to the yellowed over clear coat on the top. Um, this one's a unique model because it kind of looks like a Trini Lopez, uh, but it has the regular Gibson uh, open book headstock. Um, and this one here has the the diamond F holes, I guess you'd call them. And uh, it, it's just a different look. You know, it has the uh, the, the Get the Bigsby down here. Um, it also has the real ABR1 bridge that's screwed directly into the top. Uh, it's kind of interesting. I'm told it has the 57 Classic pickups in it. Um, I, I haven't taken them apart to figure that out, but uh, but I guess I'll take that as true. It does have uh, this kind of cream binding on it that is uh, kind of turned into a little bit more of like a taupe color uh, over time and uh, Grover tuners. And this one does check something off of the bucket list, and that would be right up here. This is the Gibson Crown headstock emblem uh, that you usually find like an, on like an SG, um, and that's in Mother of Pearl. Um, the other thing that this checks off of the bucket list is the case shroud, which is something I didn't know that it had um, and that I never really thought I'd get because I didn't think I'd ever um, want a model that... Uh, also came with the case that had the case shroud in it. Um, again, it's probably a really stupid thing to want, but my brother has uh, one of the uh, Les Paul Supremes um, from around this same time period uh, that had the case shroud, and it just it just adds to the presentation. I mean, his is nicer. It's it's white, and it just has like this really nice white velvet look. This one is black, um, but it's still really cool. It's attached to the case uh, still, and it's just a nice little touch onto the presentation. The other thing that is special about this guitar, other than the fact that it sounds great and plays really well, and, and it really is unique, it's tough to find uh, these online. Um, and also the custom made plaque on here was added at some point. Um, this guitar I actually purchased on the Heritage auction uh, from a couple weeks ago. And this one was owned by Jeffrey Foskett of the Beach Boys. Um, you know, he wasn't necessarily an official member of the Beach Boys, but I'm a huge Beach Boys fan, um, and and it, for all intents and purposes, he really was a member of the band. He was with them for almost 40 years, and he was the person who sang all the high parts um, after the guys got a little too old to sing those parts, and he's been with them since the Kokomo days, uh, and ever since. And really, when I think of him, and I met him a couple times um, throughout the years. And when I think of him, I think of him playing these big ES guitars. He was a big guy um, and uh, he played these guitars and looked great doing it. He, there's a few pictures of him uh, that you can see here that just show him playing the guitar on stage with the band. And just how cool is that to own a piece of history that clearly he liked because this, this was used and you could tell that um, it's one that he liked being seen on stage with. It's got that flashy stage presence too. Um, and now that I have it, I really do feel privileged to have it. And it's something that I think because of how unique it is and because I've kind of fallen in love with it since I've gotten it, uh, I've basically been playing it every day. And I just, I think it's one of those ones that I can kind of, you know, turn into my own guitar. One of those ones that, um, 
is a me guitar uh, as opposed to one you could just find off the shelf somewhere that you know a lot of people have played um, or that do play you know we've talked about that in the past on this channel so um, so yeah so this is a special guitar for a couple of different reasons very happy to own it again they call it the double diamond ES335 uh, from 2006 let's give it a listen all right, I'm just gonna switch between the neck, the middle, and the bridge positions. The Gibson ES335 Double Diamond checked off the Gibson Crown Inlay and the Case Shroud, bringing our total to 36 out of 63 items. Make sure to check out GuitarBucketList.com for all the latest updates.